But to the other media scandal today, and to my guests, the Nine Network today apologised to Federal Liberal MP Andrew Lamming and paid him an undisclosed amount, reportedly it's huge, more than a million dollars, for falsely claiming last year that Lamming had committed a filthy crime, upskirted a woman in a Brisbane shop, photographing her under a skirt. Now that claim ruined Lamming's reputation, he was forced to resign, particularly after Prime Minister Scott Morrison wouldn't back him. But Lamming was innocent, as the woman's own colleagues admitted. He'd just taken a picture of the woman in her workplace. It was foolish, yes. The woman, by the way, was not even wearing a skirt. She was wearing shorts, and police promptly dropped the case. But the media went for Lamming. Channel 10, the Sunday paper, New Daily, the ABC's Louise Milligan, and many more. And on March 27 last year, Channel 9 did it the same, accused Lamming of upskirting in its nightly news bulletin. Now, most people pushing that smear apologised to him, but Nine wouldn't budge until today. Joining me is former Federal Labor Liberal MP Andrew Lamming. Andrew Lamming, thank you so much for your time. It's been 18 months since you were defamed. How do you feel today? It's an incredible victory today. Very uncommon to see an agreement reached like this before going to court. And I'm delighted that that's occurred. And it's the last of multiple apologies along the way, Andrew. And many of them were confidential. So uh, for every apology you might have read about, there's another apology that was done confidentially. And I appreciate those as well. I take it uh, you can't comment, but we're hearing that you're getting a million dollars at least in legal fees and uh, a payout. Can you uh, talk about that? No, of course I can't. I obviously appreciate the apology that's been forthcoming from Nine. Uh, that was the result of the federal court resolution that we reached a couple of weeks ago, read out in court, very importantly, and it was great to be there at 10am this morning. So I understand that there'll be around eight articles also removed and uh, links to videos removed. And look, in essence, you know, people often say where there's smoke, there's got to be, well, sometimes there's only a fairy tale. And there was nothing true in any of these matters, uh, all of them, were stacked up and put before the court and in the end uh, they've elected not to defend any of them and that's very good news for me. But there's so many strange things about this, right? And, and, I, and I reported what probably, I can't remember now, a couple of days after it happened, what the truth was, uh, that the pack attack was wrong. But you were defamed by the ABC's Louise Milligan, you were defamed by Channel 9, as we just now read, uh, Channel 10, the Saturday paper, the New Daily, um, on and on it went. And, and a number of uh, 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 activists of the left on Twitter, etc. Et How did so many people get this wrong and actually cost you your career as a result? Well, there has to be silver lining in, in this, Andrew. So, first of all, I've been able to walk that journey and prove that defamation laws are working in this country, that the majority of the media do report fairly and honestly, but where they don't and don't apologise and retract immediately, there has to be consequences and I'm glad that there is. But 2021, you'll remember, very, very different time. And I was in the midst of a sense of gender hysteria around the building that was Parliament House, found myself in the middle of this vortex, and it was a snowstorm of, of accusations that uh, were so uh, coordinated and I, I simply couldn't get a word out to clear my name. And even offering an apology was seen as an admission of guilt rather than what it was, which was an attempt to uh, mend what were obviously hurt feelings from some of my political comments and debate. But it was all work-related, and none of this was true. But it was a very, very effective uh, series of complaints. And, look, sadly, the Prime Minister... Um, walked away from me um, after telling me that there wasn't any concern and, and that, turned, that turned the tables, that poured fuel on the fire because suddenly none of my colleagues could back me up and the media and the Labor opposition were given a free run and a free kick and it was just the most horrible time, not just to be called you know, something like being corrupt as some people are criticised of, but this is a deeply personal attack, you know, sexualised in nature it's something it's hard to imagine that it can ever be excised or papered over. So with this decision, I hope it starts that process. And over time, I hope that this can be put behind me. You'd never want people to go through this again. And I'm hoping that 2022 is different and we don't see the excesses of reporting that we witnessed 12 months ago.
Well, I did note uh, your reference there to Scott Morrison. That was one of the knocks on him, that he did not stand by colleagues in trouble. Um, th certainly threw you under a bus. Um, another uh, amazing thing for me is not just the media hysteria, the pack attack. After all, we saw that the same thing happened with uh, Cardinal George Pell. But also the length it took of time it took for some people to apologise and the fact that this report from Channel 9 actually won the reporter and producer, A, a Walkley Award, which is Australia's highest honour in the media, and B, uh, also got a, an award in uh, Queensland for Journalist mm. of the Year. Can you explain how these prizes go to a story that quite quickly was clearly false and why that award, those awards, have not been withdrawn? So the MEWA that run these awards have to explain that, Andrew. I can't. Uh, there have been attempts to get them to revisit these decisions. And, look, you have to understand that many stories are going to attract legal action and they're in a difficult position deciding whether to award uh, good journalistic material uh, when there's a cloud of a legal challenge. And so they have really two options, don't they? They either go ahead and ignore the legal challenge or they have to wait till it's finished and then hope that they can still nominate a story for an award. It's very difficult, but... The truth around these matters have now been known for some time, so you'd hope that it remains in the hands of the Walkley Committee to do the right thing, and we're hoping to see that because it, uh, it's not like a, you know, a Russian athlete that's uh, doping. We don't wait for them to hand the medal back, do we? Uh, the, the world takes action, and so you'd hope that the, in the integrity of the Walkleys are protected by that committee taking action and not waiting for an award to be returned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're starting to sound rather naive there, Andrew Lamming. Uh, there's plenty of examples. Louise Milligan is one of them, the ABC, who got all these awards for reporting false, implying that uh, Cardinal George Pell was a pedophile. Those awards have not been uh, rescinded. But speaking of Louise Milligan, right, she tweeted on a private account that uh, you were guilty of upskirting, which is false, absolutely false. On the Sunday, last Sunday at the Melbourne Writers' Festival, the same Louise Milligan said, and I quote her, is telling a, a group, of, you know, an audience there, if we make mistakes as journalists, if we make mistakes, we must correct it immediately and people who don't should hang their heads in shame. Did Louise Milligan immediately correct her mistake about you and apologise? Andrew, you can only presume there must be two different Louise Milligans uh, because it patently bears no reflection on the contact from last year. And most surprising of all was that the national broadcaster lined up with her and, from my point of view, uh, co-opted a path towards the federal court, knowing that this would be a substantial settlement that they were going to use taxpayers' money for, purely to avoid the loss of face that they felt came with an apology. And, again, if something can come out of today, it should be that apologising early and quickly, retracting, is no shame. Uh, it's actually the right thing to do and we should encourage people to do it. So yeah, I find it very surprising that Milligan's saying that today, uh, given the conduct from six months ago. And, of course, the ABC paid $200,000 of taxpayers' money to clear that matter with you, uh, even though she'd done it on a private Twitter account. And although she's uh, accepted that uh, you were not guilty of upskirting, she is yet to apologise. So uh, I think, uh, boy, Louise Milligan... Live by your own standards. Andrew Lemming, thank you so much indeed for your time. Great to be with you, Andrew. Thanks.